Well, g'day guys, it's Jazzy Smith here and uh, I've got a really fun song of mine called The Keys and I'm doing this song on this amazing instrument it's called a cigar box guitar, one of the coolest instruments I've ever come across and a good friend of mine makes these and they're just pieces of art, they're amazing. So I'm going to show you how I put all my sounds together with the harmonica and the cigar box guitar and show you this song as to me it's quite simple but to you it might be tricky but hopefully it will get simpler over time. And the trick is, it's just straight rhythm. But let's just think of it as three chords, and that keeps it pretty simple. All right, so I'm gonna bring it to the simpleness of how the cigar box is tuned, which is just G, D, G. And that's just tuning G. And your middle string is a D. And then the G, an octave higher. And what I love about the cigar box guitar is actually root fifth and your root of a chord and major and minor chords, you need the third to change the sound. So when you just got the root, fifth and root, it makes, you know, you can move your, you can put your fingers anywhere and it just sounds pretty cool. So it's like cheating, but it sounds good. But, um, so there's only three chords, like I said in this song, and it's uh, the 10th fret, which is an F chord, the fifth fret, which is a C chord, and then open, which is a G chord. Or you could play on the 12th fret, which is the same as open, just an octave higher. So that's G, 12th fret, that's also G. And um, the way I'm using my fingers here, I, I use it so my first finger's free. I just like to have my um, second finger on the top string and, the, and then just put each finger underneath like that. And if you have a slide, I just have a glass one because I like the sound of glass. You slide up, so it's like. But the trick with slide is you've got to keep your fingers behind. It damps the strings to keep them muted. It sounds a bit. If you like that twang, it's all right. But if you want to get that nice smooth sound with slide, it's important to have these fingers touching the strings behind it. And you can do this in front of a mirror because it's got to be right over the fret, not in the middle, because when you're playing guitar, you're playing in the middle of the fret, but it's triggering the actual fret. And with slide, you've got to go right over the fret to get the right tone and the right pitch. So the 10th fret to the fifth. That's a cool exercise. 10th to the fifth and then they open, and then slide up from the 10th to the 12th, that's cool. It's, um, it takes a while to get used to this feeling, but uh, I'm gonna take away the slide and just show you with some fingers. The timing of this song is, uh, it's just in four, four time, so it just means four beats per minute, so two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then it starts again. So notice that last chord, it did two bars, two lots of four. That's pretty much a song. It's how you put your feeling to make it sound groovy. So another part is if you can think of eighth notes, it just means you're playing the one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you can do that with your picking. I don't really use a pick. I like to use my nails and the flesh to get the tone. And I just love the feeling of grabbing a guitar, you know. But I just pretend it's like having a pick, but I use my nail here. So you can use a pick if you like, but it's just going to one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. And starts again. Notice, I'm just not going one and two and three and four. I'm going one and two and sort of accenting the beat so it's like one and two. I don't know if you notice that too. If you use your ears and go, there was something different in there. It was just because when I lift that up and go to there, 
it's too fast to move, so you get that. So you get the one and two and three and four and one and see that move? It just means you don't have to rush so much. So this is the song, The Keys, and um, if you have a loop machine at home, I'll show you a cool thing, because you can, you can, if you saw my other video, I mentioned it's good to play it, and then you start recording yourself. stop it and keep recording that little bit just in case it just the overdub should be smooth now and then if you wanted to put another loop over that you could just play the one just on the on the one like this three four and I'm going to record it again on the 12th fret. And then you got a backing track. And my loop machine, I can just take off that loop if I want. I'll take that loop off. So that's cool. Gives it variety if I want to take things out. Well, I found What I've been looking for It is my own Set of keys so It's a lot slower than I usually play this song But if I play the beat Well I found What I've been searching for It is my own Set of keys And I might add the The two and the four Open up love To set Set me free To open up love To set Set me free So I just stop my loop Set Set me free to open up love and you can go into another part of the song so it's amazing when you got loops to play with but also just dynamics I like to keep things as simple as I can because it's all more feeling and if I use too much stuff it's tricky to just be relaxed and just groove so uh, I'm gonna show you now how I play harmonica over a song like this because the harmonica gives it that flavor and that real cool feeling in between chords so say I've got that one, two, three, four. I could play like this. And that's just your blues scale in second position, cross harp. So I'm playing a C harmonica, and that gives me all these notes I can play with. So the really important note is that note there. So what that is, I'm going to notate this out for you so you can see what the blues scale is. It's whole two sucking. The important note is the bending three. So it's good to be able to play with an instrument like a piano or something so you get the right intonation. So that's your root. That note there is like... You don't want the major third. That's more for the happy sound in songs, but blues scale has a flattened third. That note there. Really tricky, but you want to be able to go straight to that note. So you can just go through it. Bending four. Suck five and then blow six. So 
So that's this blue scale. And one of the best exercises for you to do is just practice a blue scale up and down. And if you can get really confident with that, then you just play licks and you just go straight to the notes and that's where you get, you don't struggle. You can just, you know, you got the feeling. So if I had something like this, I'd go. I might feel a little groove like that and I'll find it. Notating all these, so if you want to try it, you can. Notice that slide down at the end. Okay, cool, that's cool. It's just two notes. So I find those two notes. sound cooler. The shake. Which is one of my favorite things ever. And now I'm going to show you how to do the shake because I've shown you in previous videos but the, the trick for me is relaxed because if you shake your head and if you're not relaxed it's not going to be even it's going to be you sound terrible. But so for me because I play a lot in this, I have to keep my head relaxed and this sort of moves a little bit. So the way to think of the shake is suck on four and five together and just shake your head, but you keep your lips locked in there so you're not going to get holes three or hole six. You just lock there. So when you move your head that way, it gets a hole four. And then you middle, you're back on two notes and then you get to a five. This is really important for me because you want to keep your lips on the harmonica. Don't take it away to breathe. And my course, Press Play and Blow Away, this is one of the most important things that I teach is to use your nose to let out air so you stay comfortable. And the shake is a really good example because you're sucking the whole time. And to stop, you don't want to go because it will sound terrible. <laughs> and it'll look funny too. But if you keep your lips on the harmonica, you just keep them there and then just let air out your nose. But if you have a microphone here, watch out because you don't want to do that. <laughs> you want to go. Away from the microphone. And uh, this is for me so important. I don't know if any other people teach you use your nose, but for me, it's been one of the best things I ever learned for harmonica playing. And uh, it just keeps my playing smooth and stops me filling up with too much air. But if you need more tips on this, Press Play and Blow Away has really good exercises and I'll put, it, I'll put the link in the description if you want to check it out. And let's do the shake together and slowly speed it up with the backing track. So remember, start on two notes and just slowly shake your head. Now you can try and bend the shape. That's a really cool sound. So it's like whole four bending. But now we're shaking. Oh, it's such a good sound. <laughs> it takes time, but the more you practice this, the smoother it gets. That's without shaking. That's a four and five together, just bending. Now the shake. And that's amazing. Well guys, I gotta tell you a true story. This is quite funny, because when I was about 15, my guitar teacher that was teaching me a lot of how to play blues, but he also played great harmonica, 
and he showed me how to use my ear and learn how to play harmonica stuff. He was, his name was Peter Gelling. He's passed away now, which is really sad, but he was a legend to me and taught me so much. But this is a funny story. He invited me to one of his gigs, so it was a big audience, intimate audience. <laughs> he said, all right, this is Jazzy, play some harmonica, and then I didn't know how to jam with the band. So all I did was shake for the whole song. <laughs> I was just like, I just didn't know how to communicate with other members. And since then it was great because he said, okay, so what you do is you, you, you just sit back. You don't have to do anything a lot of the time. And you just communicate with other musicians. Like you might trade licks or you might connect with a cool lick and just do double lines. Like there was a saxophone player, so you can do horn lines. There's so much you can do. You can play like an organ sound. <laughs> All these things I learned, wow, okay, now I know how to jam. But the shake is great, because you can get you out of a lot of trouble if you're a bit stuck of knowing what to do. Shake always sounds good. <laughs> so thanks to Peter for being such an amazing teacher. Well, I'm gonna show you just how I jam out with that blue scale. And there's one more thing is bending hole two. It's a mega big bend. This is probably one of the hardest things on harmonica. But if you can get that, you'll be able to get a lot of my licks and learn how I play what I play. So have fun with this lesson. I hope you learn a lot. And it's been a real pleasure teaching for you guys. And this is a song called The Keys. And if you want to check out the gear I'm using, I'll put it in the description. So if you want to, if you want to get it, you, you can know where to find it. And also I've opened a Patreon page so I can put extra things like backing tracks so you can jam along with me. So check it out and uh, thanks for your support and I hope I'm supporting you guys to become better musicians. Let's jam. <laughs>